Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at interference by division of wavefront. So let's get started. We're now on to our second main type of interference at advanced higher level called interference by division of wavefront. And this is different to division of amplitude in the way it works. So it says at higher level, you will have covered interference of sound and light by division of wavefront. Remember that interference provides evidence for the wave nature of light. We saw earlier that two sources of coherent light are needed to produce an interference pattern. In Young's double slit experiment, the two sources are created by producing two sets of waves from one monochromatic i.e. single frequency source. And an example is shown here, so it says consider a monochromatic lamp shining light on a single slit as shown below. So there's your monochromatic lamp which is sodium in this example, and we've got a single slit followed by a double slit and then a screen. And it says the single slit will produce a single coherent light source which is then instant on a double slit, creating two sets of coherent waves. The two sets of coherent light waves overlap and combine to form an interference pattern consisting of bright and dark bands called fringes. The bright bands are produced where constructive interference occurs, and the dark bands are produced where destructive interference occurs. And it says in practice the double slits are very narrow and close together so that light is diffracted through the slits and produces two sources of coherent waves. Now just show you a quick simulation to help you visualise how we get these interference fringes. So let's say we have light from a single coherent source which is going to pass through this double slit. So if I click play here you'll see the straight waves coming into the slits and they're diffracting as they hit the slits and we get this bending of the waves and they're overlapping to produce an interference pattern on the screen. So we can see we've got regions where the waves are completely overlapping and waves where they're sort of half a cycle out of phase or half a wavelength out of phase. And if we label the parts, you'll see the points of constructive interference given in purple and the points of destructive interference given in green. And it's these points which are causing the bright and dark fringes on the screen in Young's double slit experiment. So the purple lines would show you points of constructive interference on the screen, your bright bands, so that would be here, here and here. And your points of destructive interference on the screen would be the dark bands, which correspond to the green lines here, so here and here. Going back to the notes, it says that Young's double slit experiment can be used to establish the wavelength of a light source, such as a laser. So in this example, notice how we don't have a single slit first to produce a single coherent source of waves. And that's because the laser itself will produce coherent waves, so these coherent waves can then pass through the double slit to produce our two coherent sources of waves, which will then overlap and produce the bright and dark bands on the screen. Now in Young's double slit experiment, we have variables for the different parts. So we can say that the double slit separation is given by D, also known as the distance between the slits. We also have the fringe separation, which is given by delta X. And lastly, we have the distance between the double slit and the screen, which is given by capital D here. It then says we can use the following relationship to do so, i.e. to find the wavelength. So we can use delta X equals lambda D over D, where delta X is the fringe separation measured in meters, lambda is the wavelength of the light measured in meters, capital D is the distance between the double slit and the screen measured in meters, and lowercase d is the double slit separation also measured in meters. So you could be asked to use this equation to calculate, for example, the fringe separation delta X or the wavelength of the light, for example. Now it's worth looking at how changing some of these variables will affect the fringe spacing. So you can see how the fringe spacing is proportional to wavelength and the distance between the slits and the screen. So by increasing one of these will increase the distance between the fringes, i.e. your bright and dark bands will be further apart. But then you can see this inverse relationship between delta x and lowercase d, the distance between the slits. So because delta x is proportional to 1 over d here, we could say that a smaller slit separation will lead to a bigger fringe separation, or a larger slit separation will lead to a smaller fringe spacing, i.e. the fringes being closer together. And we can see that in this example here where we've got our double slit and then our points of constructive and destructive interference appearing on the screen AB. So right now we're at the lowest separation between the slits, but if we increase the separation between the slits, notice how the distance between the fringes gets smaller and smaller. And if we go back to decrease the separation of the slits, notice how the fringe spacing increases. And we can also look at how wavelength affects the fringe spacing. So remember we said these two are directly proportional. So right now the wavelength is at its highest, but if we decrease the wavelength, then the fringe spacing should decrease as well. So if we decrease the wavelength there, then you'll notice that the fringes get closer and closer together. Whereas if we increase the wavelength, the fringes get further and further apart. Now we can see a similar thing in our FET simulation here. So we've got green laser light and this is instant on a double slit. And we've then got the screen at the side and we can also look at the intensity of the light fringes produced. 
So if we shine our laser light in, the light's going to diffract at the slits and then the waves will overlap to produce an interference pattern on the screen on the right here. So notice we're getting our bright fringes there and we can see the intensity of the fringes as well. So notice how the central fringe is the central maximum and this is where we have the brightest light. So we've got the biggest wave there in the middle, just bigger than the next maxima there. Just like we did in the previous simulation, we could also look at how changing some of the variables will affect the fringe pattern seen on the screen. So notice how we've got an option for frequency here, which is in effect going to change our wavelength. So I know that red light has a larger wavelength than violet light. So if I was to move from green to red light, then we're increasing wavelength. And we said that increasing wavelength should lead to an increase in the fringe separation. So if I increase up to red light this time, we should see the fringe spacing increase. So the fringes are slightly further apart here. And we could do a similar thing in decreasing the wavelength. So if I go to a much lower wavelength, say violet light this time, then we should see the fringe spacing decrease. They're much closer to each other this time. And if we just go back to our green light for the sake of changing the slit separation this time, so we said, remember, that the slit separation and fringe spacing are inversely related. So that means if I was to increase my slit separation, that would decrease my fringe separation. So notice how we get even more fringes appearing on the screen here because we've decreased the slit separation. And then if we increase the slit separation here, we'll get even fewer fringes. They should be much further apart. So there we go. We're barely getting the two maxima shown either side of the central maximum. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.